bone chilling cold, wind chills below zero, and even record temperatures, the polar vortex, or at least part of it, made its way into South Jersey on Wednesday night into Thursday morning, bringing plenty of cold air for the remainder of the week. But how do we get to this point? Well, first let's explain what the polar vortex is. It's an upper level area of low pressure near the North Pole. That's where you're seeing these purples here. In fact, it's so high up, it's in the stratosphere, which is starting around where commercial aircrafts fly and go up to about 100,000 feet. Now, what happens in the stratosphere is that this will eventually break down, split to pieces, and then we get parts of that into our area. So we talked to Judah Cohen. He is the guru of polar vortex. He is a forecaster and researcher at Atmospheric and Environmental Research. And he said that to get a polar vortex event in the Northeast, you need something called strat sudden stratospheric warming first. This disrupts the polar vortex in its typical form, like I showed you in that image before, where it's just a nice circular uh, path. And that helps to disrupt it, split it apart even, and then the stratospheric polar vortex moves south, and then about a week or two later, a surface low pressure, one closer to the surface, follows one to two weeks later, bringing the actual cold air to us here near the surface. Let's go back to October here, our sudden stratospheric warming, that's SSW. It all originates in October. And Judah Cohen says that in Siberia, if snow cover is above average during the month of October, then we have an increased risk of a disruption of the polar vortex. In October, we were a million square kilometers above during October, or a little bit above average, Judah says. This is from the Global Snow Lab from Rutgers. What it did was create this sudden stratospheric warming event. These are temperatures in the stratosphere. Polar vortex is here. This is a big time warm up. Relatively speaking, this is still about zero degrees Fahrenheit, but still much, much warmer than the negative 70s around the polar vortex and for much of the Earth. Once that forms, it gets sucked into the polar vortex, it ends up disrupting it. Then the polar vortex is free to move south. And this was a piece of it on January 15th, just over Hudson's Bay in Canada. We fast forward one to two weeks later, this is what we had on Wednesday, a week afterwards. Closer to the surface, low pressure was over Ontario, just to the south of Hudson Bay. And then you see the cold air flowing into the region. So the next time you see a polar vortex happening in our area, you can thank Judah Cohen's research in the stratosphere for the results.